Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to kick off a brand new series looking at a very new flight controller. This is the Pixhawk 2.1. Now, the Pixhawk 2.1 is the latest generation of the Pixhawk family. We've already looked at a couple of its predecessors on the channel. The first one we looked at was the APM. The APM is really getting very long in the tooth now. It's an old 8-bit platform, uh, pretty much all of the support for that has pretty much dropped now, so people are starting to get into real trouble, particularly with the latest versions of things like Mission Planner. That was then followed by another series, which where we looked at the Pixhawk. The Pixhawk is kind of the predecessor to the Pixhawk 2.1, and the Pixhawk has been around for a long time, initially made and manufactured by 3DR, and 3DR poured a ton of cash into the creation of not only the technology but also the creation of the mission planner software that went alongside and together they've been a fantastic platform and the platform of choice for those not wanting to fly something like a NASA on craft that you wanted some pretty funky features in. Now the Pixhawk is a very capable flight controller and through all the years of development it's been around pretty safe solid flying. The Pixhawks aren't about racing and flipping and rolling and doing acro and hang time and building diving and all that stuff. The Pixhawk is really good if you are going to build a large multi-rotor that's going to carry a camera or you want a multi-rotor that has rock solid capabilities and amazing GPS performance. It's amazing in UAVs and wings. I know of people who are even using them to monitor game reserves in South Africa and it's great if you want to do things like autonomous missions where you can draw a mission on a map, upload it into the UAV, whether that's a plane, a boat, a car, a tank, a submarine or a multi-rotor and have that UAV vehicle execute that mission autonomously and then be able to fly back and land at your feet at the end of everything. So this latest Pixhawk, the 2.1, we got ours from 3DXR. I'll put a link in the description. Those are one of the few people at the moment that are actually stocking these things. So I need to say thank you to those guys for getting one to me so I can actually start this series. But what we're going to do in this series is a number of different things. But in this video, I just really want to set the scene and explain what Pixhawk 2.1 is and what it's all about. So the first slide we'll have a look at here is just explaining the key features. So as I already said, it's an update to the existing Pixhawk series. Now for those of you that uh, have looked at this thing before, the flight controller itself is actually the cube part, which is why it's also nicknamed the cube, that's sat in the middle of this tray. The tray underneath is actually the carrier. There are a couple of versions of that. We'll talk about that through the series. But the carrier's job is really to present all the connections at the bottom of the cube so you can plug things in, like your power supply, the telemetry cables, your servos, your GPS units, and all that stuff. So all of this thing at the bottom really is just to present all the connections. There's actually also another version that you can plug an Edison into and that Edison will work alongside the Pixhawk 2.1 and give you some pretty advanced features. The idea is, is that extra computer at the side can do things like run software that will provide things like collision avoidance. But the Pixhawk, as I've already said, is great at super smooth flight, fantastic GPS capabilities. We've looked at things like iNav on the channel already. iNav is a great way with very inexpensive flight controllers and GPS units to get some of this functionality. But the limit with things like iNav is that it's just finding its feet, where Mission Planner and the Pixhawk has been doing this for many, many, many years. Talks a little bit about Mission Planner. Let's just cover what Mission Planner is. So Mission Planner is some free software that you can download and the idea is with Mission Planner is you use it like the graphical user interface with something like Beat Flight or Clean Flight or iNav Flight and it's there to configure and get the firmware onto the Pixhawk and make sure it's all working, set it up and test it all to make sure it's exactly how you need it to be and then you can also use it to load and create missions and you can also use it to do things like maintain a telemetry connection so the craft can actually show you exactly where it is on a two-dimensional map using telemetry radios and we talked about those telemetry radios on a couple of other places as well so if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about that in advance of this series 
go and have a look at the Pixhawk series, go and have a look at the APM series, and we also did quite a bit of stuff with something called the Nova Pro, which was a model from Hobby King that had an APM inside, but that had a ton of options on there, and one of the things was actually the new version 2 telemetry radios that we set up. So this thing has a lot of improvements over the original Pixhawk, so let's cover what those actually are. So under the covers, it has a Cortex processor, uh, 256K of RAM, 2 meg of flash memory. In addition to the main processor, it actually has an STM32F1 failsafe processor. So if the main processor has a hiccup, it has a spare. You'll see that there's a theme developing as we go down this list. 14 PWM outputs, so 8 with failsafe and manual override, 6 auxiliary high power compatible outputs, so lots of things here to connect to the control surfaces in something like a fixed wing. Abundant connectivity options, has things like UART and I squared C, which we've looked at on loads of different flight controllers on the channel, but it also has CAN bus, and CAN bus is something that exists, and you probably have it in your car already, it's a very high speed, resilient way to transmit data around, and it's going to become a little bit more useful when more peripherals come out, and we'll talk about the peripherals in a minute. Backup system integrates mixing, providing constant autopilot and manual override. Basically, all of the smart stuff is done inside the box. There's a redundant power supply input. The older Pixhawk had that, but it's a little bit smarter in this one. External safety switches are available for this one as well. If you've seen my earlier Pixhawk videos, you'll know that that external safety switch was there. You had to press it in order to be able to arm the board. With the Pixhawk 2.1, that is optional. You can actually disable that functionality. That's not a bad idea. I quite like having that, so you can just press it when you've done all your pre-flight checks before you arm it. Uh, but if it's tucked away in the middle of a large UAV-style plane, then maybe not having it is going to be handy. High-power LEDs with main visual indication to show you what's going on. We'll have a look at that and talk about what those LED mean. And as I do things on the Pixhawk 2.1 in the series, I'll make sure that I'm including lots of inserts to show you what those LEDs are doing as I'm playing around. There's a micro SD card for high rate logging, and there's also a triple IMU and heating element inside the main case. The cool thing with this that's not really in this key features is the fact that there is redundancy for every single one of the sensors inside the actual thing itself. So not only does it have redundant IMU, and that's the kind of thing that has the accelerometer and gyroscopes on board, there's several redundancies for that. There's a redundant barometer. You can actually plug in two GPSs, and the new version of the code with the Pixhawk 2.1 will use those two GPSs properly, where with the older Pixhawk, actually, it was uh, kind of one or the other. So if one of them completely went off the rails, you could still get into problems. But... Because every single one of the pieces inside the Pixhawk 2.1 has a redundant backup or an additional piece, it means it's very difficult for a single failure on one component to bring your craft down. Similarly, if one of those components or sensors has a bit of a bad day, then that isn't going to potentially crash your craft too. Other cute touch is that last thing about the heating element inside the main case. Because these things are electronics, any changes in temperature will result in a change of resistance and performance of some of the components, and you'll get some drift in some of these pieces. And the amazing thing is, is there's actually a little heating element inside the Pixhawk 2.1 to maintain the temperature. Also means that you can use the Pixhawk 2.1 in very cold conditions, because that little heating element inside will also make sure that the internals our flight controller will be kept at a suitable temperature. Last thing to mention is the other cool thing about this. All of those IMUs and sensors are actually mounted on vibration-free mounts inside the cube itself. So rather than being hard mounted onto the frame on the circuit board and having to use soft mounts in order to try and isolate the Pixhawk from the vibrations that are coming through the craft, that is all taken care of inside this cube. Now it doesn't mean that we might not end up having to use additional ones externally, but that is all built in straight out the box. So now we've had a little talk about what this guy is and why it's very different from the other Pixhawks, let's talk about what we're going to do with this one.
Now I asked all of you what we were going to do with our Pixhawk 2.1 and the resounding answer was put it into a fixed wing model. So that is what we're going to do. We're probably going to stick it into our Mini Talon. That's a V-tailed plane. It's um, a smaller version of the main Talon, but it could be a quite a nice one to do this with. We talked about the longer flight batteries that we have for this. We looked at those lithium ion batteries a week or two ago. So I've already got the longer flight batteries. So this should fit nicely inside. Now this thing's physically a reasonable size, but I think we can get it squeezed into the mini talon and mount the GPS externally without getting into too much problem. So that's what we're going to do with ours. We're going to pop it into a plane in this series. I'll also download and we'll play with the latest mission planner as part of that. We'll look at some of the alternatives to mission planner. We'll do that very briefly as part of one of the videos. There's things like Q ground control and others. Mission planner is really only a Windows based system. So if you're going to run a Mac or an Android or a Linux system, then there are things like Q ground control that might be a better choice for you. We're going to cover how to wire it up, set it up, connect everything, make sure that it's all working in the right way and configure and set up the radio and do all those pieces too. We'll have a look at the latest flight modes that are available through Mission Planner with the Pixhawk 2.1. A lot of the information is going to be covering stuff that we've already covered in both the APM and Pixhawk series, but it's been a couple of years since we've gone into this detail, so it's going to warrant us taking a fresh, modern, up-to-date look at what the current state of affairs is there. Then we'll cover the testing of the first flights, make sure that uh, we can get this thing flying around, that things like the return to launch and stuff are working okay with the GPS. Then we'll look at some of the more advanced features and mission planning. And then as we go through the next couple of months, I'm aware that there's some really cool sensors going to be coming out for the Pixhawk 2.1, which will enable pinpoint accuracy for the GPS to within a handful of centimeters which will be amazing for those who want to use the Pixhawk in mapping or aerial reconnaissance uses and also things like lidars and sensors that will give very very accurate height readings which will be handy to have if you're going to try and do things like the auto landing function where you can auto land a plane using this thing but having those kind of additional sensors on it means it's going to be far more successful. So join me in a week or two for the first video in this series where we're going to download Mission Planner and we're going to start looking at this flight controller and starting the setup. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section down below and I'll try and make sure that I cover them as part of the series. And again, there's a link to where we got ours from if you're interested in going to have a look at it. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.